Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. In this episode I will share some tips and tricks regarding making decisions in C Sharp. In general the concept is pretty simple. When a certain condition is met, we perform certain action. Obviously the condition can be met or not, that means it can be true or false. In programming we have special data type which can store those two values, it's called boolean. Let's create our first condition. First I'm creating a simple variable of the type boolean. Then I'm adding our first if statement. The keyword if is followed by a condition surrounded by round brackets. Then between the braces I add the actions that should be executed when the condition is met. If you have only one statement you can skip the braces, but I don't really recommend that approach. You will save some space, but sooner or later you will get some problems. Trust me I've been there. Remember that the conditions do not have to be boolean variables. The important thing is that the expression evaluates to boolean value. Sometimes you can see people comparing the expressions that evaluate to boolean or boolean variables to boolean values. It's completely unnecessary. In case you need to compare something to false value, it's much better to invert the whole expression using the exclamation mark. Sometimes you want to do something if the condition is true, but you also want to do something else if the condition is false. That's what the else keyword can be used for. Now let's have a look at the chain of conditions. It's very common use case, you know, if A then B, if C then D and so on. It's important to understand that there are two ways of doing that. First one is to use the ifs without the else part. In that situation every if will be evaluated separately. That means the result of the previous one doesn't have any influence on the next one. But there are situations when we care only about the first condition that is true. That means once we met the condition we don't want to check any other thing. It sounds trivial, but sometimes the conditions are extremely complex and calculating the result of all unnecessary conditions may actually kill your game. In those situations, instead of using the separate if statements, you want to chain them using the else if. In this situation, the evaluation of the conditions will stop after the first one is met. One of the most common situations is to perform different actions depending on a value of one single variable. In this situation switch statement can become useful. After a switch keyword you add the name of the variable between the round brackets. Then you put braces and then something quite unusual. Keyword case followed by a value followed by a colon. Then you provide all the actions you want to happen and then to break outside of the switch statement you use the keyword break. If you forget it the next case will be also evaluated. You may be wondering what is better using the if else statements or the switch statement. People are arguing about it all the time. Now let's have a look at the default value. Normally if you provide the different values for the case but do not provide the default if no condition is met basically nothing happens. If you want like a final else statement that will address all other use cases, you simply use the default keyword. Now there is one more magical thing about the switch statements. Multiple values can result in executing exactly the same actions. This is a fantastic way to make your code a little bit shorter. There is also much shorter version of the switch statement, but it can be used only if the end result is assigning a value to a certain variable. It's utilizing the lambda or if you prefer the arrow function syntax. The default value is a little bit unintuitive. Basically you mark it using the underscore, but of course it doesn't have to be there. Well, we talked about the shorter version of the switch statement, but there's also a shorter version of the if statement called ternary operator. It can be used anytime you want to assign a value to a variable. I'd say it's like asking a question. You give it a condition followed by a question mark, then you provide a value that should be returned when the condition evaluates to true, colon and the value when the condition evaluates to false. Great, isn't it? And you know what else would be great? If you'd like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's talk a little bit about the complex conditions. Not always there is only one thing that has to be evaluated. 
And going one step further, not always the things that you evaluate are very simple and quick to execute. You know, sometimes you will need to read some data from the database or from an external service. It really matters how you combine the conditions together. First way to combine two conditions is the AND operator. We do it using double appersand symbol. Whenever you use it, both of the conditions have to be true. If one or the other evaluates to false, you will get back the false value. Imagine a question, are you rich and popular? If you are not rich, even though you are popular, you have to say no. The special thing about the double appersand is that if the first condition is evaluated to false, the second one is not even checked. If you think it doesn't matter, think that the first condition is something simple, like checking the size of a list. And then the second one is sending a rocket to a moon and waiting for a result. A little bit exaggerated, but I think you get the point. Now, if for some reason you want both of the conditions to be evaluated always, you can use single appersand symbol. Now, in case you want only one of the conditions to be true, you can use the vertical bar symbol. The situation is exactly the same. If you use double, if the first condition returns true, the second one won't be even evaluated. If you use single one, all of them will be evaluated. I mentioned it briefly before, but there's also the negation operator in a form of the exclamation mark. Whatever you put it before will be inversed. So any, even the most complex condition evaluating to true will become false and the other way around. Now let's have a look at something called null coalescing. One of the most common conditions is to check if something is null. If so, we assign to a variable a certain value as the other one. To make it shorter, we could use the ternary operator. Well, there is even shorter way called null coalescing operator. It's basically two question marks. And what it means is if the first value is not null, return it. Otherwise, return the other value. There is one more very similar operator called null coalescing assignment operator. Imagine a situation, you have a variable. If it has a value, you want to leave it intact. But if it's null, you want to assign to it different value. That's where this particular operator becomes handy. I hope you learned something useful. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.